and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask, so I'll tell you. The accept mean of angel is messenger and the accept mean of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what we need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with the angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I'll introduce you to my wonderful guest, Elizabeth Bakovici. I knew I was going to pronounce it wrong. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future and transform your present to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on your next steps and take charge of your destiny so you can fulfill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guide meditation, like angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Elizabeth Bukovici, about Merlin, the round table and the stars. Now, Elizabeth is a mythic storyteller, intuitive healer, writer, coach, new paradigm teacher and conduit for higher energies. She's the catalyst for soul growth and helps people heal on a deep level through channeled activations and vortex healing, a special form of divine magic through the Merlin lineage. Her latest courses include Awaken Alwyn, The Way of the Bard, and Arthurian Myth and Magic. She is also the host and producer of seven magical storytelling virtual summits, including Treasures of Ireland, which was absolutely amazing. I watched that. High Magic in Eden, Avalon and the Holy Grail. These were immersive experiences exploring the goddess Brigitte, the Morrigan, the Fae, mythic storytelling and Celtic lore. Elizabeth has an MFA in creative writing from Emerson College and a BA in English literature from Skidmore College. She has published two books, a children's book called The Fairy and the Firefly, and a handbook about herbal medicine entitled The Energetic Apothecary. Now, she loves to help people with writing, storytelling, and birthing creative projects. And her greatest gift is igniting the soul in others so they can step into their power, their purpose, their creativity, and their greatness. Now, with testimonials such as Writing with the Goddesses is an incredibly, incredibly powerful program. During my time with Lizzie and the Goddesses, I found myself going deeper and gaining greater clarity on what I am to bring forward. Within this sacred space, I learned to trust my intuition. And through Elizabeth's incredible gifts of guidance, teaching and editing, my life has been forever changed. For me to allow such beautiful poetry to flow through my fingertips has been so freeing and healing to my soul. I am forever grateful to Elizabeth and her magical ways with words. So without further delay, hello, Elizabeth, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Oh, my God. I'm so excited to be here. I know you're going to pull a testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a couple in there that I did. Um, I, li I like to throw those in because I just love, um, because quite yeah, often we, for we, we forget, you know, how much people do think of us. Um, and it's nice to be reminded sometimes. Yeah, so, I know when reading that I was I knew like oh that line is from that person and that it was I don't know I just felt the love just pour into this space so ah I love that anyway I I am so excited to be here I just when you asked me on this show my soul was an immediate yes and I didn't even know what I was going to talk about and it was just like doesn't matter there's something magical that's supposed to happen here exactly there is indeed so before we get into this fascinating conversation i want to remind you that not only can you share this video but you can also ask questions leave comments and thoughts as both elizabeth and i want you to be part of this conversation so please don't be shy so elizabeth why don't you tell us more about your journey and how working with merlin the round table and the stars can help us live to our highest soul destiny let me see where they want me to start um well, I can just say it like from my journey, mm. I have always been fascinated by stories of King Arthur and the legends of the round table, uh, you know, from the time I was a little kid. And I've always been really taken with stories of nobility and justice. And I don't know, but I, I've come to understand because I've been on a quest myself and I, I don't know how to explain. It's almost 
these these stories found me. I know that many people resonate with these stories, but these stories had like they knocked on my door in a way that I wasn't expecting. Um, it was kind of coming through. It's so interesting. Right before the pandemic started, I'd had this like it was kind of like a breakup experience. And I'd, I'd saved up all this money to go move across the country to be with this person and did. And then it just like all fell apart. This was like beginning of 2020. And I was like, oh my God, I, and I was like, if I had never met this person, like what, it's almost like I had lost part of myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I didn't know who I was anymore outside of this dynamic, outside this relationship. And all of a sudden this thing came through my soul. Well, if I never met this person, I would go to Avalon. I'm like, what? <laughs> I would do what? And I, so I go online and I'm, so I spend a weekend. It was almost like something from a movie. I spend a weekend like looking up trips in Avalon. I'm like, I don't know where this came from. Like Glastonbury, the whole like uh, Southern part of England, Cornwall, where there's Merlin's cave. I'm just like, I don't know. I was like taken over. And uh, so then that was a whole weekend. Monday morning, I get an email from someone. I've been on her email list for years, never gone on a trip with her. The subject of the email is, do you want to go to Avalon? So <laughs> I'm not kidding. I had all this money saved up. This is like my, I just booked this trip to, I was like, that's it. This is the universe. And I, it was like a really, I just didn't even think I was like, I'm, I'm doing this. And then the pandemic happened. So my trip was actually pushed back, not kidding, two and a half years, like two and a half years later. And uh, it's almost like, I wondered if I was ever going to go and no, but when I got there, it's so funny because I already started uh, my company, Magical Storytelling. I was already doing a lot of like editing and writing coaching, but the magical piece hadn't fully come in yet. And I'd already at that point in time, I'd had like a lot of initiations working with bardic magic, like word magic itself, but not the King Arthur legends. They hadn't come for me yet. And once I went to Avalon, it was like, I can't, I mean, well, one thing I did is I went to, um, I, um, for my birthday, this is kind of a gift to myself. I uh, booked a private tour uh, to Merlin's cave. Uh, it's in, like right by Cornwall and Tintagel. And I don't know why, but I was like, I must go here. And it was so funny because I, I the the day that I went to get there's like there's the regular Merlin's Cave where most of the tourists go. Um, and then um, I won't tell you the name of my guide. If anyone wants to know, I'll tell you. But he had like a, there's another part of the cave, which is a secret part of the cave, which only like special initiates are really brought into. And you can only get in if the tide is just right. And so as luck would have it, this was a few days before my birthday. That's why I was like, that's it. I'd never booked a private tour before, but I was like, I am going to this cave. And I went to the cave with him and it was so interesting because that was like my, like, that was my whole thing. I was like, I must go to this spot. And we go in the cave and it's pitch black because there's like the tourist part where all, there's a lot of people or hundreds of people. And then all of a sudden you turn off to like a small part in the rock and it's just sheer darkness. And I'm there like, I'm, part of me is like my human self, like, what am I doing? Like, why am I going? Like, you know, like, um, and then I remind myself, okay, this man has been a tour guide for 10 plus years. I'm fine. I'm safe. Um, and so I follow him though. And it just gets darker and darker. And we go to this, all of a sudden the air changes. And it's almost like I could hear like the sound of minstrel singing, even though there shouldn't have been a sound around me at all. And we go deep. And it's so funny because there's a certain point where I couldn't see anything. It was pitch black. And it was just his voice directing me saying like, it's just a little further, just a little further. There'll be light soon. And it was this moment of complete, absolute trust. Finally, we arrive in Merlin's cave and we sit down and it's just sheer utter peace such as i had never known before and so we're in this beautiful cave and it's funny because he says to me strange that you wanted to come here and i said bye I was, <laughs> like, I so <laughs> want you to come. Just, this is where people go to release all of their fear the people who come here that's what they're looking for so it's interesting. So we just had this moment. I think he led me through as like a quick guided journey 
Um, but for me, there was something very sacred that happened in that space. And when I said that, like throughout the years, initiates would come to this space and that's why it had this very it had a holy presence mm, and yeah. i want to connect this too because a lot of the work i've done this past year uh for example you mentioned treasures of ireland so treasures of ireland i just want to say it was a fundraiser to reforest ireland but what really led me to put this together was my deep connection with the holy grail and so the holy grail on the surface like yes it's a mythic object that people have sought for thousands of years Really read it, what it is, and I can explain more of this, is the grail is a sacred object that restores paradise, that restores heaven on earth. So in all of these stories and legends, of, so you will see this in a lot of ancient Celtic myths and legends. When the king, or I can say the queen, is very noble, when they are coming from that place of deep nobility, alignment with the cosmos, deep harmony with all of creation, the land is very fertile, the land thrives. When a king is hedonistic, when they don't care about the people, they only care about themselves, the land withers and dies. This, you see this across history through all different cultures. And uh, so I share this. So I put on this to get this, this fundraiser, Treasures of Ireland, Tree Forest Ireland, but really it was, for me, it was doing the work of the grail, this re restoration of paradise bringing beauty back to our sacred mother earth. And so I share this with you because I have really become uh, very attuned to this energy of holiness. When you work with the Holy Grail, there's a certain frequency. When you work with, with, the, with the holy energy, it is like nothing else in all of creation. And when I was in Merlin's cave, I felt that same holiness. So I want to share that with you. And uh, then, you know, we left the cave. And so the rest of Tintagel is actually an ancient site of kings. Uh, and it's actually where the kings would go to be crowned. And so it's so funny because there were a couple, I just, and I knew my soul was like, we've taken you here for a reason. And so there were two spots. I was taking the spot where the king would be crowned. And I was also taking the spot where the queens would wait. <laughs> they had a special <laughs> spot where they would wait while they watched the king being crowned. And I was like, I had, to, I had to go to both of these places. And uh, when you're sitting in the spot where the queen gets to wait, you're literally like up on a high cliff. It's like hundreds of, there's like, you're up on these huge cliffs. There's hundreds of feet below you. And again, it comes back to the energy of being fearless. Yeah, and I really yeah. feel like these are ancient codes of the kings and queens. It's like a lot of people think when they look at those kings and queens, oh, they look so brave, look so valiant. It's like, no, they're just as afraid. But that's the whole thing is there's something bigger that's leading them on. And I think that's one of the reasons why I, I, I kind of weave when I talk. So I want to weave this into your, your beautiful show, which is all about destiny. That's the whole thing. Uh, there's, a, there's a beautiful quote by Joseph Campbell. The cave you most fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. And I want to bring this through for all of you here because that's really it. It's uh, we might feel moments like when when you feel that resistance and I want to make a note. Sometimes there's resistance. That's like your soul telling you, like, wait, wrong way. Don't go that way. And other times there's resistance because you are stepping into your soul, calling your soul destiny. And you will know this because this because on the other side of this resistance is expansion. And I want to say that when you step into these energies, I'm right now kind of talking about more of the, the wizard energy, the Merlin energy, mm -hmm. the king or the queen. These are three sacred energies and they go together. And when you step into these three energies, it doesn't have to be all of them, it can be one of them. You step into sacred purpose. You step into the highest potential of your soul. So I just want to make a note of that. And I want to share, it was funny because after I sat in like the part where the queen waited, um, and again, like I told you, I was like hundreds of feet up. You're just looking down. Um, I, you know, I did feel there is an activation there in that place to be there. And then the other place is uh, I was taken to the spot where like the king would kneel. And there is a certain place if anyone ever goes to Tintagel, there's like a place where you put your foot, like that's where you would have kneeled. And my guide was like, do you want to need? And I was like, I was like, oh. I was like, I was like, I'm too shy to do this. I was like, no, no, it's okay. I'm fine. And then he walked on a little ways and my soul, my guides were like, go back. 
I was like, no, and I was like, I was, and he's like, go back, just put your foot in the, I, so I swear I did this like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing, but he didn't see me. Now I'm telling the whole world on, on yeah. the internet. <laughs> but so I go back because I got this, go back. You need to go back. And so place my foot again in this holy, holy spot where the Kings were crowned. And I share this with you because I feel like it was those three together. It was those three initiation points, going to the cave of the wizard, sitting in the place of the queen and putting my foot where the King himself would kneel. There's something about these three holy energies and the marriage between them. And that's why when we look at the stories, we look at Merlin, Arthur, Guinevere, there's something very sacred with the three there. And uh, so I'm wanting to, uh, what's really coming through is all of you. Like there are so many different archetypal energies. You don't have, if, if you don't resonate with those three energies, that's totally beautiful and perfect. But what I'm really wanting to inspire in all of you is that you step into your destiny. Like when, when you look at those three energies, the king, the wizard, the queen, they are portals to destiny. And they help you step into the highest timeline of your soul. And so my invitation for all of you, when you listen to these stories, when you listen to King Arthur, these are mythic legends and these myths they give us the opportunity to be all that we can be. When we listen to a story and the hero or the heroine approaches the innermost cave, the thing they fear the most, the reason that they have that moment is because they must become more than themselves. It's like really stepping into their divinity, their true, I call it the, this is a Hindu concept, but I'm going to bring it in. It's called Atman. And for anyone who is, uh, you know, Hindu, I, I might not be pronouncing that a hundred percent right, but it's like your over soul. It is your soul through all of your lifetimes with all of the wisdom you possess. And, uh, I just want to share, uh, for example, I just, uh, I R Ray mentioned that I just hosted an event treasures of mm -hmm. Ireland to reforest Ireland. Uh, it was my Atman, my over soul that did that. Because I had lifetimes where, because I should just give a little bit of background. Uh, so uh, in, you know, around, I believe it was like the 1500s, uh, Queen Elizabeth actually, it was 1560, Queen Elizabeth I, who I am named after, she ordered the demolition of almost all of Ireland's trees. And this was to really break the Irish spirit. It was also to use the wood to build like the British Navy, but really it was to break the Irish spirit. And I share this, um, I share this, I kind of, I lost my thread for a second. Oh no, I got it, it's back. Um, because I heard this story and it just went right to the heart of me. And and it was interesting because when I started putting the event together, I realized, I realized that, that I had had different lifetimes where I had died. Like I had been in Ireland and I had died defending those trees. I had died defending them because to me, they were the holiest of holies. And so I'm sharing this with you because a lot of times when we step into our destiny, it's not like, yes, there's this lifetime where you got to be this person. But especially this time period that we have incarnated into, this is a destiny that's not just for you. Whatever your name is in this lifetime, this lifetime is your destiny for your oversoul. This is, this is a lifetime that, I'm not kidding, your soul waited millennia, multi-millennia for this iteration. So that is why you have so many of these archetypes within you. So you, so I can tell you in truth, I actually have the king, the queen, the wizard. I actually have all of these within me. Um, and so it doesn't matter. Yes, yes, I am woman in this lifetime, but I hold them all within. And I share this with you because I invite you that all of these stories, and I feel there's an invitation coming. I do feel the presence right now of Merlin and Arthur. Um, one of your two, actually, whole, all three. And they are here inviting you into your mythic self. And this is you beyond. And uh, I can share uh, something that's kind of coming through. There are different like, degrees of, um, of our human experience. 
So when we are younger, it's kind of like, it's almost like a personality. Who are you on a personality level? And that's how we define ourselves. Uh, your likes, your dislikes. Also, who are you on a body level? And then all of a sudden it turns into community. Are you a teacher? Are you a doctor? It's like, what is your role you know, in the community itself? These are all ways that we define ourselves. But truly, when we move beyond all that, we move into the mythic self. Who are you on a mythic level? And that's, to me, like those are the trappings of destiny. That is the key. That is the portal to who you really are and what you're here to do and be and become. And I'm just, sorry, there's so much wanting to pour through, but I want to share that destiny, the way that I'm seeing it in my mind's eye, it's almost like a vortex or a labyrinth. It's like, a, you know, it's like, it's uh, interesting because a lot of times destiny, uh, it's, I've heard this before, life can only be lived forward, um, but it must be understood backwards. And I just had this experience, uh, very dear to my heart, this actually past weekend, I connected with, it was a cousin that I had not seen in 15 years. And it was, that's a long time. I grew up with this person. And it was so weird because there were circumstances, like family circumstances that pulled us apart. And for all these years, I wondered if I would ever see him again. This was a man that was like a brother to me growing up. And it was interesting because I surrendered it. I literally was like, I surrender this fully and completely. If I've lost this person forever, I accept that because it's part of the divine plan. And then I saw this, this past week, and I'm sharing this, it was like three days ago, I saw this cousin that was like a brother to me. It was like a miracle. And I realized that it was destined. We were always, our families had a kind of a family split. It was like, this was destined that there would be this split, but it was also destined that we would come back together. But for 15 years, I did not know that to be. And so I share that because destiny, like, there are forces beyond that which we recognize. And I'm sharing this because a lot of times, especially people, you know, we've all gone through like the pandemic. I know all of you here, if you are a spiritual soul, you have gone through many dark nights of the soul. And what I want to say is that your destiny is writ in the stars. Your destiny, like there are things, there are people you will meet, there are places that you will go that you did not realize that God had planned for you. And that's what I love about destiny. It's yes, I believe in free will, but I genuinely believe that there is so much beauty that the divine intends for us. And when we open our hearts again to that, I, I'm calling it holiness. I'm right now it's like holy love, holy magic. When we open our hearts and souls to like this holy love and holy magic, Oh my God, that is when we step into the most immaculate destiny. And I want to say uh, what I feel coming through is we choose our destiny in every moment and we choose it by, to me, it's aligning what we choose to align with. And uh, I swear I'm going to take a break in a minute, but there's just so much wanting to pour through. And one of the reasons why, so today, um, when I was invited on this talk, what came through as the name of the title was Merlin, the round table and the stars. And like, we haven't, we haven't gotten there yet. Um, but it's interesting because what I love about the round table and this connects to the stars, many people do not realize it in the earliest legends, like there's not actually just one round table. There are several and, uh, the round table is actually meant to be in alignment with the heavens. And so it's like when we look up at the, the zodiac, when we look up and we see all of those beautiful stars in the sky, that actually was part of Merlin's creation of the round table. And so this is about cosmic harmony, divine order. So what I have found when I have been blocked in my purpose or in my destiny, I am not in divine alignment with that divine order. I am not in harmony with all of creation. And that's actually one of the great pieces of wisdom that Merlin wants us to understand. So a lot of times, like when I have been really lost, I will literally go through my life and I will say, where can I create order? Sometimes this is going to sound very 3D after all the stuff I've been saying. 
I'm not kidding. I will just be like, I am decluttering and I will throw things out and I will release old energy or I'll pay. Like, say there is a, like an old debt that's like, oh, that's just been forever. I'm going to pay this because I am going to call in. This is a, this is, this is magic for one, but it's also cosmic law. And is when you call upon that law of divine order, that is also the pathway to getting unstuck and also getting back on the path to your highest soul destiny. And we can claim our highest soul destiny at any time, simply by one, release the chaos, step into divine order. And then what I like to say, I, I connect personally with the Holy Grail, but I call in, it's like the most sacred, holiest version of my life. And to do that, I really invite in the Grail and so, you know, I know that, you know, today, um, so I feel like the way that spirit wants me to explain this, because Arthur is really associated with the grail, yeah. is that there's a certain nobility there. And uh, there's a certain, when you, when you connect with that royal energy, there's nobility there. And so it's you actually becoming guardian, guardian of this earth, guardian of your purpose. Because that's the whole thing. As soon as we think that, you know, the universe is going to put everything in our lap. But like the knights who sought the grail, we have to go out and claim it. We have to go out on that noble quest. And uh, so I'm sharing that part. There's like, there's a balance here. And I do feel that when you go on that quest to achieve your highest soul destiny, there's also... Um, and it's, the, it's necessary that you also work with Merlin's wisdom. And Merlin's wisdom really is divine order. It's like there's a magic that comes into place when you are in alignment with harmony with all of creation. And I just want to share um, a little bit of a story. Uh, yeah. I would bring the, I'd actually bring, I'd love to read it to you, but I, I don't know if it'll, it'll work on this, uh, this live call. So I'm just going to share what I remember. And so this is a story from the Vita Merlini. So for those of you who are not familiar with really ancient stories, the Vita Merlini was written by someone named Joffrey of Monmouth. And he is one of our first Arthurian scholars. And uh, so he wrote a beautiful thing. It's called the, you know, the Vita Merlini, which translates into the life of Merlin. And one thing I want to explain for everyone here, those of you who are familiar with him before, you've heard me say that, but I know that a lot of you on this channel, you haven't heard, uh, you haven't heard my spiel before, so you're going to hear it again. And so one thing I want to share that many people do not realize is that there was not just one Merlin. Mm -hmm. So Merlin was actually originally a title. And in the ancient days, uh, Merlin, basically, so the wizards, uh, there's actually a lineage of wizards and that uh, they would do these very extraordinary things. And when someone would see what they did, they would say, oh my God, that's, they would say, that's a Merlin. Because in that time, the word Merlin meant magical transformation. So they would say, oh, that's a Merlin. That's a magical transformation. And that's how the title came to be. And so I share this. So the stories that we hear of King Arthur, I have been taught that actually that was the, um, I believe the fifth Merlin in, the, in that wizard lineage. That was, I call him Arthur's Merlin. And shortly thereafter, there is another Merlin. I think this is the sixth or the seventh Merlin who is featured in Joffrey of Monmouth's The Vita Merlini. And at that time, it would have been understood there were different Merlins. But in today's world, we've kind of conflated them. Yeah. So in this Vita Merlini, there, there's actually still a little, bit, a little bit of conflation here, even with Joffrey of Monmouth. Because I should mention that when we look at the Arthurian legends, we are looking at a time around 500 AD. That's the time that we are looking at. And uh, so there is uh, some discrepancy there. You know, there's arguments among scholars about the exact yeah. date here. But that's really what I want you to set your sights to, 500 AD. So know that when Joffrey of Monmouth is writing this, it's around, um, it's almost like 1100 AD. So it's five or 600 years have already yeah. gone past. And remember, a lot of these stories, part of why it's so hard for us to know, like, what's, what's real, what's not, 
is that they were oral legends. Mm -hmm. Like, and this uh, I mentioned, or I, I believe, and it was Ray in the very beginning mentioned, uh, I've taught courses on bardic storytelling. The bards were the ancient oral storytellers. Uh, and in those days, if something was important, you remembered it. And it was the responsibility of the bards to pass the wisdom from one generation to the next. Uh, so a lot of this is legends. And Joffrey of Monmouth is a very special man because he committed this to paper. He said, okay, I'm glad that it's a legend, but it's important. We got to write something down. <laughs> and so in the Vita Merlini, he does conflate these two Merlins a little bit. And I want to preface by saying that. Uh, but what I want to say is uh, the Vita Merlini starts out, uh, there is a great bard um, and his name is Taliesin. In all the stories, he really is the master bard. And he goes off looking for Merlin. And it is said that Merlin has gone running off mad into the woods. And uh, there was a great battle. Merlin saw people who were really close to him perish, you know, like perish and die. It drove him to madness. And now they do not know how to bring him back to himself. For here was the great wizard. And again, I want to stipulate, this is not Arthur's Merlin. Arthur's Merlin went through many a battle by his <laughs> king's side. Um, so yeah, that's another, another way we can tell that this is not the same Merlin. This is a later Merlin, probably about 100 years later. Um, and uh, so this Merlin goes Right. Like he sees the people he cares about perish in this battle. He runs to the, I believe it's like uh, the Cambrian. I might be saying that wrong. There are woods in Northern Scotland. Um, and he runs off into these woods and they do not know, they go to him and he cannot be brought back to sanity. Um, he says many rude things to different Kings and Queens because he doesn't care anymore. He's like, I don't care. Um, and of course it is his friend Taliesin the um the great bar the great storyteller that goes to him and taliesin is the only one that can get through to him because what he does is he tells merlin all of the stories of the fish in the sea and the stars in the sky and the changing of the seasons and the way of the world so what he does is he really goes deeply into like he doesn't go into a mythic story but it's like the story of earth itself the story of life, a story of harmony. And it's this, this story of divine order, harmony and balance that at last brings Merlin back to himself. And so I'm sharing this because there is divine wisdom here. And uh, so at last Merlin is like, oh, I, he remembers who he is. And so this harkens back to the earlier Merlin with the round table. And like I said, the round table was when it was created it was to be, it was below the stars. It was situated in such a way to really be a vessel to receive stellar wisdom because the ancients knew actually, I mean, there, I could, I'm getting kind of a hit to go in this direction here. Uh, so Guinevere, there are many stories and I want to actually really reference Wendy Berg um, as the person who really brought this knowledge forth. Uh, there are a lot of people now who believe that Guinevere is actually, she was a fairy who incarnated into human form. And uh, so uh, there's a lot of evidence now that when we look at the realms of Fae, there's also a deep connection to the, co to the cosmos, to the stars themselves. And uh, so it's very interesting because the ancients knew the stars were pure magic. They knew the magic of the stars. That's why when you look at Stonehenge, you're like, what's happening here? It's like, yes, they knew the stars. Um, and you look at the pyramids, they knew the power of these alignments. And so a lot of what we created here on earth was to bring us into cosmic balance and harmony with the heavens above us. And uh, what I'm really getting is that on these, on many ancient occasions, uh, for example, equinoxes, solstices, we would call to the heavens I, we would really call upon the stellar wisdom of the stars, the wisdom of the stars. And the reason that we would have, you know, these sacred ceremonies on these holy days is that we would bring heaven and earth into balance, into alignment. And I want to say for a lot of people, uh, 
I don't know the audience, but I just feel like there's someone here who needs this message. When I was younger, I was someone who could be on my meditation mat and I would be like, I have the vision of my life and my destiny. And I would see it so clearly, but I didn't really go out and take steps to make it happen. So I was very much doing like more of that spiritual bypassing. And I would have these very powerful meditation experiences. Or I was like, I went, I, I went to my future self. I went and, and really what I have learned is it's kind of like the, the secret to living your destiny is you must go forth and be that in the world and create that alignment of heaven and earth. And so really one of the reasons like we can work with Merlin uh, and we're going to do um, toward the end of the call, I promise to do a quick guided journey. And this is really to bring you into balance with the stars, with the earth. And also I wanna talk about the round table in a second. Uh, because the round table really is, uh, this is an earthly, you know, this is an earthly table. And like I said, there are several, there, there was actually a cosmic table that was in the heavens, but like, and Merlin really based this table on that one. But I'm sharing this because the earthly table that we consider the knights all sat here and at this table, the knights were truly equal. And even though Arthur was the head of this table, um, he was equal. And that's something that I really feel is so important because we are in this world. There is any soul who is incarnated in this lifetime. There is no destiny that is greater than another's. You know, it's like we are all here at a moment of greatness, a moment of prophecy. And I do want to share, I have this kind of coming through. So the original Merlin, I shouldn't say the original one. I should say Arthur's Merlin, the fifth Merlin of the lineage. There are many stories of, um, I call him like little kid, Mer little like baby Merlin. When he was like eight or nine years old, there are legends of Merlin at eight or nine years old, giving prophecy to a king, a great king whose name was Vortigern. And at this point in time, uh, there was still a lot of the original, uh, the original kingdoms of, um, I don't want to say of England, but they were just the, I would say the tribes at that time. Yeah. Uh, and it's so sad. Basically, you know, young Merlin gives this prophecy. I mean, Ver Vortigan just wants to know, he keeps building a castle that doesn't stand. So at first Vortigan just like, why doesn't my castle stand? That's all Vortigan wants to know. <laughs> and Merlin gives him the answer. I can tell that story if you want, it's a beautiful story, but there's a part that's really coming through right now. Um, after he explains what's going on for Vortig and why his castle, every day the castle is built and then every day it falls. Why, you know, like at last young Merlin goes into prophecy and he says, all this will fall, save wild whales. And it's interesting because it's, it's actually correct. Um, Arthur's great, uh, his legacy is that he unites all these different factions of early Britain, which wasn't called Britain at that time, but he, he unites these different, you know, different factions mm -hmm. and he really brings them all together. So there's this great message of unity. And so it's interesting. So while yes, like, so, so much of that ancient world was lost, but what we have, when we talk about the legends, like, you know, when, when the young Merlin says all will fall, but wild whales, Part of what was kept alive were the stories of Arthur or the stories of Guinevere, the stories of the round table, stories of Camelot, because these were not meant to be lost. These are also, I, what I really feel that some of these stories were actually given to us by the stars. Um, you know, they, the stars were part of this. Like I said, Guinevere, if she was in fact a fairy incarnate, she had great connections to the stars. And uh, there are, uh, this I'm, I want to always give credit where credit's due. Again, I'm giving credit to Wendy Berg, uh, who also looks at the lineage, King Arthur's lineage. And so he's Arthur Pendragon. So you can see there's the dragon in there. Okay. But his grandmother, according to legends, her name was Gwen Pendragon. And so Gwen really means white. When we hear that, we know that we're talking about the shining ones. And she is actually seen not so much as a fairy, but actually as like a, a being from the stars herself. And when we look at Arthur, even the name Arthur comes from, it's Arcturus. And if yeah. we look to the stars, there's the constellation there. 
So the stars have ever been part of these Arthurian myth and legends. And part of the magic, we just think that like the, the King Arthur legend is all about going to seek the grail on earth. But Merlin's magic was cosmic. Merlin understood that you were calling in. When he was calling in peace and harmony in Arthur's realm, he was calling in the heavens. Because when you look up there, everything is in alignment. Everything is perfect. And so it's that perfection, that divine order that we get to call in. And when we call that level of perfection and divine order into our lives, what we are doing in is calling upon the primal laws of magic that govern our creation. So that's something that I just wanted to bring through. I think I can finally take a breath. <laughs> take take a take a breath and breathe. And, but I mean, it's 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 so it's so fascinating, you know. And all this, and I mean, I I'm a storyteller myself. I've always loved stories, you know. Even as a tiny kid, you know, people would find me lost in books, um, you know. As my mum said, I was reading before I could talk. You know, I was I was always um, in into stories. So it's great that you're bringing all these um, story stories in that some people know, some people won't but they'll touch certain parts of it. And, you know, what was coming through all of that was really working together, working in unity, um, you, you know, that we're all our own individual individuals, but we're all just one community. And that's, you know, that's kind of like how we should be um, working and, uh, you know, live, living, living along. And when you mentioned about Queen Elizabeth, that when I actually watched the Your Own Treasures of Ireland, the same thing happened when you mentioned it. I literally was all goose bumpy. And it's like, oh, I think I was there as well. <laughs> I was like, I feel like everyone who went there was like, oh my God. Like there was such deep healing. Uh, that's one thing I, I do want to invite. If anyone feels a deep connection to Ireland, I, I will include the link if you want to. Um, the summit's no longer live, but if you want to watch the replays, you can purchase them. And it is, they're life changing. Like, I am forever transformed by this experience. Um, and I, I'd love to share more about that, but I feel like, you know, I, I think you have a couple more questions. And I think that we still want to talk about this idea of unity and the stars. Yeah, de def def definitely do. Um, yeah, want to want to go more into that, and definitely want to get into this um, this guided meditation because I think it'll be absolutely um, perfect. You know, and this subject is a you know is a brilliant subject for me because I've always liked the Arthurian, Arthurian legends, but because I do actually have that Merlin lineage myself, mm -hmm. um, and and that you know which you know I've been down to Glastonbury. As people now I've been down to Glastonbury well over 20 odd times and the first sort of like 15 16 years was me actually doing my own work down there and that's where I connected to the Merlin lineage and I was one of the original goddesses of the white spring mm. um so that's always always been and when you were talking about you know you couldn't go um come over to Avalon you know, for two and a half years. And that's the beauty of um, Glastonbury, um, you know, and the um, sacred sites. You're only allowed in when it's the time is right. And every time I go down to Glastonbury, even when I take people down on retreats, we will only see and experience what we're supposed to at that time, because Avalon doesn't give up all its secrets straight, straight away it only gives you the bits when you're ready to experience um, uh, the, ne the next bits along the journey, which is like the story, isn't it? It's like where you go along that, that hero's journey, you're only shown what you need to know at that particular moment in time to actually get to actually get you through. So it's brilliant the way you've been weaving around, you know, this story and, and, your, and the, all the stories you've been giving, you know, there's snippets in there that can really help people go, oh, actually, yes, now I know why I've done that or how I should be doing that. So it's absolutely, um, you know, a, a, amazing about that. So so unity in the stars, because you said when we look up, you know, they, they are all, all connected. So how can we bring that into our current life? Yeah, I love that. I just, well, one of those kind of coming through immediately is stars are our friends. That's like, I really think like the stars are our friends. 
and they are wanting so much to connect with us. <laughs> it's like, and um, so it's interesting what's coming through. Um, I actually just ran, um, it was an event. It was like a, a three day challenge in my community called the Aquarian Queen. And it's interesting because this really came through. So I can just say on an, ast an astrology level, for those of you who don't know, like more of the, the nuances of astrology, you have something called your South node and you have your North node. And so the South node is like usually, you know, what you've been in previous incarnations and your North node is your destiny for this lifetime where you're headed. And so my South node is in Leo. I've had, a, you know, I've had a lot of connection with royalty and my North node is in Aquarius. And so it's interesting because we are now living in the age of Aquarius. Yep. And so it's interesting. So what really was coming through as I started to connect uh, with, um, I, I had this vision come through of the Aquarian queen. And I extend this because I know there are people listening to this. I'm sure there are men here who follow this. There are their Aquarian kings too. And it's interesting because when you look, so for me, the, you know, when you, when you think of that energy of Aquarius, um, I feel like this is very cosmic and I'm sharing this because the stars, they're wanting us to look up. They're wanting us to look up and see the bigger picture. And that's the whole thing is when we get stuck in more of that earth lens, hmm. we don't always see everything, but the stars see all. They have watched humanity. Like it's actually, they're very similar to the trees in that sense. Um, yeah. The trees, they have seen humanity through the eons. Sometimes like you could have a tree that's been with one family for a thousand years. Think about the stars. What if they are there watching earth? watching our souls, watching our families, not just for hundreds of years, but thousands, thousands of years. And so what I'm really getting, uh, what's wanting to come through is that there are powerful celestial energies that you can call in. And so a lot of times when we do kind of higher magic, for example, I will work with different planetary bodies like Venus to bring in love, beauty, abundance. Venus is just also powerful. Um, when you want to bring in like more, uh, pleasure is the word that's coming through. Venus, like this is the planetary body. She is not just a goddess. She is a planetary body that yeah. she will bring that in for you. When you want to really expand, work with Jupiter. And people, when I say that, they don't really know what I mean. Oh, how do I work with this planetary body? Like what I do is I will open in the morning. I think it's really best to open in the morning with like an invocation to all of your guides and don't forget your higher divine self. Is that a lot of times we think of like our team yeah. spirit. And I'm always like, oh my, I used to say, oh my guides say. And eventually I had like guides say, stop saying this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my guides literally said, stop saying this. Yes, we're helping you, but your soul like is part of this. You are here with us. You are equal. So I'm sharing this. So in the morning, um, I invite you to start calling in some more of these cosmic celestial energies. And so this is also a year, uh, I believe in the Vedic astrology, this is a year that we're really being governed by Saturn. And Saturn is seen as, sometimes it's kind of connected more to karma, but it's also connected to destiny, which why it's perfect that we're here. But yep. Saturn really kind of will bring in that energy of discipline. So it's kind of like one of those things that you want Saturn to be your friend. You want to make friends. Basically, when you connect with Saturn, Saturn will help you live your highest soul destiny. Um, and so I'm sharing, these are more planetary bodies, but I'm doing this more as an example to illustrate that you get to form a connection with these energies. And so just in this moment, if I say, so right now I'm just gonna call in energy of beautiful planet Venus. And I invite you to kind of see this beautiful red light, like swirling down onto you now, like beautiful red. It's like almost like petals. That's what I'm seeing. And I invite you to just breathe that in for a second. And you might get a sense of this more Venusian energy. And now if I call in Jupiter and you, everyone knows Jupiter, huge planet, and you can see all the rings around Jupiter. I think it has 26 moons. I could be wrong, but it's 26 or 36. It's a lot of moons. And uh, I just really invite you now to Jupiter. We invoke you into this holy, beautiful space. Um, and I invite you to see this planet in your mind's eye. Maybe you actually see it before you. And I invite you to see it's like orange, beautiful tangerine, orange raindrops pouring down on you, 
like beautiful golden rain. And this should feel warm on your skin, like the light of the sun. And really just take a moment to feel the codes that are coming through from Jupiter. These are codes of expansion. These are codes of luck and prosperity. And just take a moment to really feel that. For me, when I feel that Jupiter energy, I get kind of like that Santa Claus, like ho, 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 like that kind of like, that's the Jupiter energy. And so we're really calling that in. And so I'm actually for everyone here also, okay, I have to do Saturn as well. I'm hearing that. So I also, I said Saturn is more serious, but it's the destiny planet. So Saturn might be a little harder to imagine, but I'm at, I invite you to imagine almost kind of like a blue purple. It can be a God. It can be goddess. I think it's more of a God. I get more of a masculine mm -hmm. energy. Um, and I invite you to just take a moment. I'm seeing this beautiful blue and purple mist that's just swirling around you now. And just take a moment to really receive these are destiny codes. And breathe in and I want you to feel a sigh of relief knowing that Saturn has come to assist you. Stepping into your destiny, it gets to be easy. This is a moment where we align with Saturn, where we align with this beautiful cosmic force and Saturn is on our side, mountains move. Just breathe that in, like really feel like you're on the top of a mountain, breathing fresh mountain air. This gets to be easy. And so I use these planets uh, to really give you a sense of the unique energies, the unique cosmic energies that you can call in every morning. And it can literally just be as simple as that. And what I yeah. will do is I'll just say, I mean, I call in a lot of gods and goddesses too, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm guided in a second to bring in the stars. Uh, but what I want to share is that all you have to do is just really invite uh, their magical influence there. Um, I sometimes use the word divine intervention. I say the highest blessing in my life, is divine intervention for my highest soul path, my highest soul destiny. These are powerful cosmic forces that cannot be overstated. And this is really uh, important. It's coming through. So what I will do in practice, and I will do this before we do um, a little activation with Merlin and the stars, is I always like to cast sacred circle. Some people will call this a witch's circle. Um, I don't know what I, for me, it's just like, it's, I call it sacred circle and I call, I, sacred, I call it sacred circle. Yeah. Because I, I know not everyone aligns with the witch lineage and it's just a way of really, you know, consecrating the energy. And so for those of you, like, you'll see me do this. Maybe you've done this with Ray before or other practitioners, but I will call in all of the elements, the directions and why you're doing this. This is not just uh, pageantry. This is not like, oh, this is the way we always do it. It's like, you are calling on the forces of creation. You are calling in, like, I'm really feeling like you are the anchor. When you, when you do that, you become a practitioner of magic and you become a magical practitioner of your life. And it's just one big, great spell, one great incantation, but it's like your life. It doesn't need to be like, yes, like we can call in individual things, but really it's our alignment and we want to bring the heavens. Like the heavens are waiting for us to call on them, to interact with them. They want to help us. There's a reason that when we talk about destiny, we say it's written in the stars. And I brought up like a miracle that happened to me. I said, it was like literally th about three days ago, I saw a cousin, someone who was so dear to me, like we, our families were ripped apart. And this, this, this guy, he was a brother to me growing up and I never thought I would see him again, but it was, I now know that it was written in the stars that 15 years later at last, like we would come to get, it's like, I, and I, and I had stopped believing I had just let it go. And I'm sharing this because there's a reason that we say things are written in the stars It's because for ages, for millennia, the stars were our great teachers, mentors, and guides. And the same way we just work by calling in Saturn and Jupiter and Venus, we can call in the stars. We can call in stellar wisdom because they have seen thousands of years of human triumph and tragedy. They have seen love. You want to call in love. Guess what? They have seen the greatest romantic love. They have seen the great poets. They've seen William Shakespeare. They've seen Yeats. They have seen the Greeks 
putting on their plays, beyond that they have seen the eons of Atlantis. Think of the wisdom that they contain within. And one thing I want to say is that you, you do want to be, con what I'm good I'm getting is you want to be conscious of who you're calling in uh, wisdom from. Because, for example, if you call in wisdom from a tree, you're going to get the wisdom of a tree. If you call in the wisdom of a rock, you're going to get the wisdom of a rock. So, like, it's, I really feel that it's like, I, what I'm getting, like, this kind of idea of a round table, it's like the round table of life. And I'm hearing the circle of life. And so, for example, one of the people, uh, this is why a lot of times people will have mentors, uh, is because in the ancient days, the kings and queens knew this, the way to really have like great prosperity in the kingdom was you would have a lot of guidance. It wasn't just like, oh, I have to do this alone, but you would call in, that's why we had Merlin. You would yeah. call in the great wisdom keepers. And then the king or the queen, what they do is they weigh it. They have to weigh all of their wisdom from all of the different sources and determine how they want to go forward, how they want to act. So I want you to really step into, I invite you to step into the role of queen, king, and wizard. Because in this moment, it's like, for some reason, it's very gender fluid right now. Um, it's, and I'm also a wizard and I'm female. So just letting you know, like, and I, I hold, I feel like I hold king codes and I'm fully female. So I just... It doesn't actually matter your gender. Know that you can hold all of these codes because they're all distinct. Um, and um, I just want to say that when you ask for wisdom from the stars, really see them as these great starry brothers and sisters. But what I'm really sensing is they are elders. They are elders. So, you know, Gaia, you know, our beautiful Mother Earth, she is young compared to some of these cosmic beings. So this is really what Merlin knew. This was the wisdom that Merlin knew. Merlin understood. And this is, I, I, my, my history might be wrong here, but like, I know that there are people like Copernicus and Galileo who they recognized that actually the earth um, revolved um, around the sun, not the other way around. But it's funny because Merlin in his time understood regardless of, what planet revolves around the sun or what, you know, where the moon revolves. It doesn't matter because he understood that we were part of a great cosmic dance, the great circle of life. And that's why we have the round table. The round table is the circle of life where we are perfectly balanced with everything in the creation. And when we want to thrive and we want to prosper, we come into balance with all of it, every rock and every tree and every star. And it is not separate from us, but one with us. Wonderful. And I think that is perfect timing for this guided meditation. I know. You're like, what are we going to do? I know. Okay. Okay. So, hold on. Just take a sip of water. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, I was going to say, take a sip of water. I know Ray has, you know, I think you've been, I know you've been on my email list a little while, so you know. I get a dance. Um, this, is our, this is my first time connecting with Ray, so I, I'm... I'm just so excited to be here. I just feel like I'm just bubbling with effervescence uh, to be yeah. here. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been brilliant wisdom that you, there um, that you've you've been giving you've been giving so far, and I think now yeah is the right time to just let us get into that meditative state. Beautiful. Okay, so I invite everyone here to just close your eyes, take a couple deep breaths, and I invite you to take your feet and really place them very firmly on the floor. And as you're taking another deep breath, feel beautiful roots, like the roots of an ancient oak tree sprouting down from the bottom of your feet, going down, down, down toward the center of the earth. Breathe into these roots and feel them wrap around the crystalline core of Mother Gaia. This is anchoring you, grounding you, for our sacred celestial journey today. And now I invite you once more, breathe into those grounding roots. Take a deep breath, feel into your heart. And I invite you to see your heart, not just as something that beats within you, but as a glorious star. And take a moment to realize you are made of stardust. Take a moment to feel yourself as a starry being of the heavens and feel your heart 
as this radiant star that already holds all of the wisdom of the universe within it. All, all of the wisdom that the stars have seen for thousands of years, millennia. All of this is contained in your heart of hearts. And I invite you just take a moment and recognize the wisdom you contain within you, the starry wisdom that you've always held, but perhaps never realized was there. And take a moment to see if your heart, now that you are recognizing it as this great bastion, this great beacon of wisdom, does it have anything to share with you today? And just see what happens, just see if anything comes through. And now I invite you to feel yourself transported through time and space. And you are in an ancient citadel. This is a citadel of Tintagel itself, where Arthur himself walked. And I invite you to see ancient castles all around you. And there before you, a huge round table made of oak. There is a figure at the head of this round table, a wizard wizened beyond years. You walk slowly over to this being. He wears a beautiful blue cloak. And he stands over the table, staring at a map. He looks so ponderous, so focused. And as you go closer, it's almost like he doesn't see you. But at last, footstep by footstep, you make enough noise that he turns his eyes and looks at you. You lock eyes, you and the great wizard, who can only be the one and only Merlin. And I invite you to really take a moment to introduce yourself if you have never met Marlon before. Tell him your name, tell him why you are here, why you have come and what wisdom you seek. Marlon nods, very grateful that you have come and now open to see if there is a message that Merlin has for you. This may be words, this may be in the form of a symbol, a color. Open now to just receive a message from the great wizard. And now you'd look at the round table at the map that Merlin is looking over. He is leaning over this oh, with such intensity, with such concentration. What map is this, you ask? And he says, this is the map of your soul. This is the map of destiny laid out here before you. And I invite you to take a look at this beautiful map. This is your soul destiny. Do you see anything on this map? What do you see? How does it appear to you? This is a huge scroll. Perhaps this map gets bigger and bigger. But you see something on the map, maybe something from the past, maybe something in the future that you're not sure you like that much. You ask the wizard, can we change this? Marlon smiles and says, yes, for destiny is writ in every moment. Let us call upon the power of the stars. And in this moment, we call upon the power of the Pleiadians. We call upon the powers of Sirius. We call upon the powers of the Big Dipper, Cassiopeia, all of the stars in the heavens, all of the stars that Merlin, the fifth Merlin, Arthur's Merlin, that this great wizard work with. We call these stars here now to bring through stellar wisdom, stellar magic. And all of a sudden you see this beautiful swirl of diamond light. It's a vortex that pours down from the heavens, forming a quill. And all of a sudden you see new things written on this map, this map that holds your sacred soul destiny. There's new coding coming in, a new destiny, a higher destiny. And all of a sudden you just see almost like snowflakes, beautiful stardust, raining down and just open to receive these frequencies from the stars. We are calling in the wisest stars that exist in the Milky Way. 
We are calling in the stars that are aligned with Stonehenge. We are calling in the stars that were there in the days of Arthur, the stars connected to Gwen Pendragon herself. We also call in the fairies, the fae, those connected to the one and only Guinevere. Be here with us and just allow all of this magic to pour through. The fairies bring, it's almost like a pink and purple mist that pours onto this map of destiny. And the stars continue to rain down high in the heavens, almost like there is a dance above you, a dance of shooting stars. The heavens themselves are rejoicing and Merlin takes his wizard staff and puts it in the ground. It says, here today we call in your highest soul destiny, the highest timeline for your life. There's a great spark, an emanation that comes from his wizard staff also onto this map of destiny. And now the last ingredients, Merlin says, you, your divine self, your divine soul essence, Look at this map now. How does it look? This is your destiny. You take this map in both of your hands. Maybe your fingers are trembling as you behold it. And you feel that star in your heart start to ignite. And there is almost like a bolt of lightning that comes from your heart. And all of a sudden you yourself are lit with star power and you feel your own magnificence, your own energy as a creator God, creator goddess, pouring through you into this map of your sacred destiny. And here today, we step in to the highest destiny of your soul, calling in the magic of the stars, the holy magic that was there at the dawn of time, at the heart of creation, calling that in now, for everyone here. And I invite you to connect with these great stars, these stellar beings for wisdom they have to bring through about the steps you will take to anchor in this highest destiny. Beautiful. And as this wisdom coming through. I'll go silent to let this wisdom really come through for you. There are still beautiful stardust, stardust like snowflakes that fall from the heavens on your skin, on your heart, on your face. Take a moment to bask in these star frequencies. Breathe in, breathe out. And I invite you to look once more at the great wizard Merlin to see if there's any last words of wisdom he has for you today. Beautiful. Now I invite you to take one last look at the sacred place, this holy place. And you may thank the stars, you may thank the wizard Merlin, the round table, the fairies, this great place of Tintagel, ancient place of kings and queens. And now Merlin takes his wizard staff and there is one last activation he gives you. There are three energies that come from his wizard staff, three different colors that all fuse and merge together. This is an attunement, sacred activation of the energies of king, queen, and wizard. Merging all three of them. Maybe you see one as gold and one as purple. Maybe you see another as blue, like the night sky. To see them all pouring into your heart now, into the star heart. Take a moment to receive this final activation of destiny. Know that with these codes, wizard codes, queen codes, king codes, you may go forth to prosper in the creation. And we call in divine balance, divine order. We call in divine balance in your life, harmony with every living thing, with every element, with every tree, with every blade of grass, 
with the heavens, with the waters, with the sea, with all directions and all the elements, we bring you into divine, holy balance now. Blessed be. I invite you to take one last look at this sacred place. And feel yourself transported through time and space back to the room where you first began today's magical journey. You might want to rub your hands together, move your feet against the floor, breathe in, breathe out, really come back into the sacred space, into this now moment. Beautiful. Thank you very much as we give people a chance to uh, come back into the uh, space, into the here and now. And, that, and if anyone's got any questions or anything that you want to ask them, please do ask them. They will get answered. Um, and if you want to share, you know, please feel free to share. You're more than welcome to do that. Thank you. That was absolutely beautiful. Um, it was absolutely amazing. And I just had to do it. I had to pull a card because I just can't help it. So, <laughs> You know, that's that's the way these things go. So um, for you, Elizabeth, and everyone watching, the card that came out, Fast Vistas, Expand Your Horizons. Ah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> How perfect is that, um, you know, for what you've been talking about, you know, it's such confirmation for you and for everyone who's watching, you know, explore those Fast Vistas you know, here on earth, up in the skies, you know, across the seas, in the earth, wherever it is, you know, just expand. And you don't even physically have to go there and travel, you know, just expand your energy um, as you did in the uh, guided meditation that Elizabeth did. So, yeah, that was absolutely beautiful and, and, and perfect. So thank you so, so much. So, um, Elizabeth, do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers? Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit. I was coming through is I mentioned an event I just did uh, called Treasures of Ireland. And I want to share this because this connects to the round table. So this was an event uh, I was called to put it, you know, I was called to, you know, put this beautiful event together to help reforest Ireland. And I didn't, I knew that I was guided by the grail, you know, because the grail is really about the restoration of paradise. Uh, but I didn't realize, you know, till I was there, uh, you know, I had, there were, I think, uh, 11 beautiful speakers. Uh, maybe it was 12. I just, I just knew oh that God. it was this coming together, all of us at the round table, but it wasn't just the speakers. It was the audience because collectively, uh, for the fundraiser, we uh, we raised enough money uh, to plant is 237 trees. Oh. So we ended up raising, it was like 8,500 US dollars. And uh, I'm sharing this because this was something that could not have been done alone. This is something because the people came together, united by this vision for a better world. And that was the whole thing is, there are so like, the reason that I think this event was so successful is there are so many people who they want to make the world a better place, but they don't know how. And that is the vision of Merlin. That is the vision of Arthur. It was that that was the vision of Camelot, this bright new world. And it's interesting because there are so many legends, and I'm glad that you brought up Avalon, Glastonbury, and only it really only opens the door when you are ready. But Avalon is a sacred realm. You know, Avalon is a sacred realm that invites you when it is when it is time. But Camelot was Arthur's vision. And that's the whole thing is that this vision, we get to hold this now because Avalon is um, in many people kind of considered almost like a fairy realm. Mm. Uh, you know, it's a fairy realm. It's a, it's very Edenic. If you go on guided journeys, it is a very sacred place. You do get a lot of sacred activation when you go there. But Camelot is the vision of the new world. And many people think that Arthur failed. They think that in the Battle of Camelot, when he fell, that that was the end of it. But I am here to tell you, it is not so. 
I'm here to tell you that we get to take on this mantle. We get, we in this divine lifetime, like I said, this is not just a lifetime for whatever name you have in this lifetime. This is one for your oversoul. That's why there's so, like, that's why all of your mastery from all of your lifetimes, a lot of it's all coming online in this lifetime because you need all of it. And so we can really hold this vision of Camelot. There are stories. These are the, this story is the bad stories. The story, the narrative that we are being told, it's almost like there's nothing that we can do. That our world is just every day, um, you know, it's like, we're never going to save this planet. There's global warming. There's climate crisis. No, we get to choose what story we believe, what story we accept. And these stories, these Arthurian legends, they are divine truth. That's another thing that Merlin brings through. It's this energy of divine truth, holy truth. The truth is that we are powerful beyond measure. We are the grail. And let us together sit at the round table, each of us doing our part to build this new world. And when we talk about like individual soul destiny, um, that's what we talked about here today. But I want to uh, understand the, the table in a different way. The table, like I said, the round table also represents the circle of life, all of life. Our individual soul destiny is not unique to us. It is part of the web of all creation. They, we are all here, these sacred interconnected beings and our destinies are entwined. Our destinies are interconnected. And so I invite you to take your place at the round table to recognize that your destiny is sacred and holy. It is time for you to claim it because the world is waiting. And it's not just the world, but there are so many people that by you stepping into your destiny, you help them step into their destiny. The stars, when we see them in the sky, they're all in clusters. And that is uh, the invitation for us today, to recognize the power we hold together. Beautiful. Yeah, it definitely is unity and, to and togetherness. And that's been beautifully woven um, in today's episode. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful, because I know I definitely have. So if people want to connect for you, Elizabeth, how do they do that? Okay, there are a couple ways. Uh, there's going to be a free gift uh, for anyone who wants to uh, go deeper with Merlin. I have a free gift called Magic with Merlin. Um, and so this is just a beautiful activation to do some more magic with Merlin. And uh, if you are more interested by uh, the queen energy, uh, I also just recently did a three-day series uh, called The Queen in the Age of Aquarius. Uh, that's on my YouTube channel. It's free. Uh, if you can't find it, you can just uh, you know send me an email, I'll give you the links. But this was a three-day journey to really receive like very epic queen codes. And I had three queens come to me uh, really wanting to bring through epic queen codes. They were Cleopatra, of course, um, the Queen of Sheba, uh, and also Queen Isabella of Spain. And this is also a kind of a precursor to a new course that I'm offering. Uh, in the beginning of March, I'm running a program called The Queen Codes. So if you uh, are intrigued more by this queen energy and you you know do the queen challenge and you're like, I want more, uh, there are links um, under those YouTube videos where you can sign up uh, for the queen, uh, the queen codes. And lastly, I want to just draw back to Treasures of Ireland, uh, because if you were intrigued by this, uh, there's still the opportunity for you to watch some of these interviews. Uh, this was a very epic, very powerful summit. So just reach out to me uh, if you want to watch those. I'm just like so honored uh, to be to be here with you and I just I feel for everyone watching it has been it has been my destiny it is my destiny I knew when Ray asked me to be here that I was that there was something in in destiny that called me here and so my invitation for all of you is whether it's with Merlin or the Queens or connecting more deeply with Celtic legends and lore um, through the treasures of Ireland summit I would love to continue this magical journey with you. 
Beautiful. And yeah, if you um, uh, send me all those links, I will put them in the comments so people can literally just click straight on them, go straight there and they literally I can, they don't even have to think about it. So, okay. There's really also, um, I'm going to give them actually, this is what's coming through. There's, there's also a second free gift I'm going to give them. They want me to give this to. So this, so you're going to get, so you can sign up for Magic with Merlin. So that's just, you know, Magic with Merlin. And then there are two other, uh, there are two other activations that it's another free gift. It's called Journey to the Grail Castle. So I'm going to also give that for those of you who want to go deeper with the round table and the Holy Grail. So there, you know, there's one free gift where you get two meditations. So it's just very, very exciting. If you want to go deeper with King Arthur, deeper with Merlin, there's lots of opportunity now for you to do that. Beautiful. Thank you so, so much for your gen generosity. And thank you so much um, for being on the show today. It's been an absolute um, pleasure for me. So thank you. And of course, you know, for everyone watching, if you're now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me. And we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny by seeing into your future to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life as well as a couple of other free gifts um, by signing up to my uh, email list. And of course, thank you again ever so much for watching. I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified um, when the show goes live or I post new guide meditations. But also, you know, um, do check out uh, Elizabeth's uh, social media and her YouTube channel. You know, and every time you subscribe or like any of our channels, our videos, share them. It really helps get the message out there and, you know, connects everyone to everyone else so that we can create this beautiful heaven on earth. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye.